These Hive Zoo servers are super cheap, but unfortunately, super loud. I thought the fan speed was stuck at 100% all the time, but then I ordered a second one and noticed that it wasn't as loud as the other. And after I dug through every single BIOS setting, I can tell you, with confidence, it is not in the BIOS settings. In order to change the fan speed, we're going to have to download DOS, yeah, old school DOS, some extra tools, create a custom disk image, burn it to a flash drive, boot it, command line interface to create a new IPMI user, now we can plug in a second ethernet cable to the server, log into it from a different computer, and now we can change the fan speed. Oh, and you're gonna have to use the VGA port on the server for a monitor, can't use a video card. But let's break down all these steps, shall we? First, visit link number one and download FreeDOS, because it's free. And grab yourself a copy of Rufus from link number two. If you don't want to install, but just run it from the EXE, you can use the portable version, that'll work just fine. Download from link number three, IPMI config, choosing the DOS Windows Linux free BSD UFEI version. With all of that downloaded, we're going to go ahead and open up that IPMI config folder, go to the DOS folder, and copy everything in here. Right click, copy. Now come on over to your free DOS OEM CD folder, open up CD root, and paste it all there. Now all of these files, the IPMI config tools, are going to be included when we make our disk image, which we do by going to make iso.bat. Go ahead and hit enter to run it. Press any key to continue. And now we have our iso disk image. Go ahead and open up Rufus. In Rufus, we'll select the flash drive we're flashing to select our disk image, and hit start. It'll take just a few seconds because our disk image is really small, less than two megs. And now, onto the server. I recommend setting your IPMI IP address manually in your BIOS settings, but if you can find it from your router and set a static IP address from there, then that's going to work just fine too. But it is a good idea to at least check the BIOS settings, especially if you got your server used. With your IPMI IP address settings the way you want them, go ahead and save and restart. To interrupt startup to select a boot device, that's F11 on my keyboard, choose your boot device to UEFI your flash drive. I can use these commands found in link number 4, an article from Serve the Home. We are creating an account in the IPMI or the IP management interface so that we can then visit the IP address of our server and log into it from a web browser. To create a user, type IPMI CFG, calling that program, dash user list. This will ask ipmiconfig.exe that was included on our disk image to list all of the existing IPMI users. Mine had root. But of course, I don't know what they set the password to on there. So we're going to add another user. IPMI CFG dash user add three or any empty slot number that you have on yours. Bob, the username, whatever you want your password to be, in this case password, but please don't use a default password like that. And then the number four so that he has full admin access. Enter. To change any default passwords for the other accounts, which I highly recommend, IPMI CFG dash user set PWD and then the slot number followed by the password. See link number five for more details. There is no shutdown command for FreeDOS, so just pull out the power cable, remove your flash drive, and turn it back on. At this point, it's okay to let your server boot into Linux, Windows, whatever operating system you had installed on it. Now we can use a phone, computer, Samsung smart fridge, whatever it is you have on the same network to open up a web browser and visit the IP address of the IPMI interface. Upon logging in, we can see just how powerful this interface is and why we don't want to leave any of those default passwords. 
it's going to ask if you want to update Java, even if you say OK. What's really going to happen is it's going to say that Java couldn't load, couldn't find the update, because these are old servers, they're not new, and the link it's trying to use is most definitely expired. But from the screen, I can see right now that I can power down, power on, reset the server. I can actually see what's on the screen that's displaying here, if the screen hadn't gone to sleep. Virtual media. Here, I can take a CD-ROM or DVD image. If I'm an attacker and get into your IPMI, I can point this at some server I have on the internet, and now there is something plugged into your computer, like a CD drive, that has whatever I want connected up to your computer. So change your default passwords. Fan speed is what we're trying to change. So if we go over here to configuration, you can just click on that, or you can click on down here to fan mode, down here at the bottom, fan mode. We can set to power utilization effectiveness, optimal speed, standard, full, and heavy IO. Thanks to another link in the description, we can see what all of these mean. This guy up here means that it's going to be 30% fan speed minimum up to 100% and it'll be temperature controlled. Standard speed is 50% fan speed minimum with temperature control. Full speed is exactly what it sounds like. And heavy IO is standard, except that it has the fans that blow across your PCIe slots, like your graphics card or whatever you have installed. It spins those up at 75% with temperature control. And all the other fans for like your CPU and RAM, that's just gonna be 50% plus temperature control. Now I did see some remarks saying that if they didn't use full speed, that their processor was thermal throttling. So I ran a couple benchmarks. On a couple of 95 watt CPUs, I genuinely didn't see a difference. And on some 130 watt CPUs, the peak temperature over a three minute render was one to two degrees better with full speed, but it's not enough that it was thermal throttling or anything like that. So I'm just gonna leave mine on standard and I might even go down to that 30% minimum, but we'll see how that goes. It is summer and it is in my garage with a hint of air conditioning. So I'll probably leave it on standard for the summer, but it's your server and you do what you want with yours. There you have it. A lot of work for what probably could have just been a BIOS setting, but now you know what IPMI is, and we learned the true value of friendship and subscribing to your friends' channels along the way. Stay tuned because the next video on the channel will be the conclusion of my 3D printed kitchen countertops. Don't want to miss that one. Oh yeah, and there's some other server videos somewhere around here. You should click on those too. Click all the things. It's the internet. What could possibly go wrong?